Hi, I'm Dawn and this is where Shabby Meets Bling. You've probably just finished watching a wonderfully wicked treat from Monica up in Philly. Now we've crawled on over to the Midwest for my first stop on this spectacular journey. Because you are watching 1313 Mockingbird Lane, a vintage Halloween playlist crawl. I am being joined by two of my very good friends, Monica from Up All Night DIY and Annie from Crafting with Indiana Jones. This will be a six video playlist. Make sure you stay tuned to each and every video. You'll be glad you did. My wicked little project is gonna bring out the kid in me because I get to create a boutique. Not just any boutique, this boutique is going to be fit for a witch. Last year, I turned a finial into a jack-o'-lantern witch and I named her Wanda. Well, Wanda has decided that she would like to open a high-end shop. A shop that all her friends could come purchase their goods at, whether it be a broomstick, a potion, or a handbag. We will call this boutique the Witch's Wardrobe and the Witch's Wardrobe will carry it all. These are a few of the wonderful little items I just found on my recent thrifting trip. This little jewelry box, this little lamp, the baskets, and this little tabletop mirror frame, I think. And oh yeah, that's my neighbor, Winnie. She came over for a visit. Hey, everybody. <laughs> She's so cute. So at Goodwill, I came across this little jewelry box wardrobe. And I thought, oh man, <laughs> I know what I'm gonna do. And the thing with this thing is that it's broken. The door is broken. And uh, other than that, it is in great shape. I mean, really spectacular shape. And if you notice the price tag, what it says now, for in some change, well, it didn't always say that. I took it to a young girl that was working at Goodwill and I said, this is broken. <laughs> this, this, this is definitely broken. Um, do you think they really meant to sell it for this amount? And she says, hang on a second, I'm gonna go check. She comes back with that tag of $4. So by simply asking, I got it for half off. Simple. Well, as most of my projects begin, uh, it's with disassembly or destruction, <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. So I've removed all the little components and now I need to take out this interior because I'm going to put a new liner in the back. So step one, disassemble, and we need to really clean it up well. Now, Blue and I are going to repair the door. <laughs> so just like if it were full size, just some glue and some clamps and uh, we will make this door one again. The tough part about it is the door is at an angle. It's a fancy wardrobe. It's so fancy. And you can see that it's actually angled if you look at the top part of the wardrobe over there itself. So clamping it is a little bit tough, but uh, Blue and I make it happen. We make it happen. And now a quick deglossing because <laughs> we are gonna paint. We are gonna paint this little beauty. So we'll get her deglossed so she takes the paint real well. I even give it uh, a quick sanding, just to be sure. Now we paint. I'm using a Rust-Oleum Matte Black. And of course it's black because this is a witch's boutique. And what other color of furniture would she have in her boutique other than black? Mm. Time to upholster the back wall of the wardrobe. I found this beautiful vintage Halloween fabric at Joann's and it was on the last chance um, end cap. And it is just adorable. And what I'm gonna do is something unusual. Not the bonding, I'm using Ultra Bond here. So it, uh, it will apply to something else. And I'm trying not to bond Blue's paws in the process because he will not fit in the wardrobe. So I am bonding my fabric 
for the next step. That next step you might find kind of odd, <laughs> but uh, I am taking some corrugated, plastic corrugated, it's part of those signs that I love to use, and I am going to bond my fabric onto this corrugated. I had never tried it before I did this today, and I figured why wouldn't it work? I mean, why wouldn't it work? So I am gonna simply try to bond it and get all the, the threads out of it so you can't see those threads behind there and bond it to, to that corrugated. I'm doing this because I don't want something permanent in the back of the wardrobe. And it, it worked. It straight up worked. I'm gonna be doing this a lot now because it was so simple. Don't have to wait for anything to dry. And there it is. Look at that hanging on. Woohoo! Ultra bond! <laughs> These are the panels that go in the doors of the wardrobe. They are plastic and one of them is cracked and they're a little scratched, but I'm gonna try to uh, doctor them up a little bit with some black dimensional paint. And once my black dimensional paint is on here, I am going to cover them with black glitter. So we're gonna add some bling to this cute little wardrobe. So, I uh, got to thinking that the wardrobe can't be the only piece of furniture in a boutique because she's going to have a lot of product to display. So I came across at a different Goodwill. <laughs> I go, I go thrifting a lot. Let's be honest about it. Uh, I came across this uh, square holder for in a drawer in your kitchen. So to really pull off the illusion that it's a miniature bookcase, I'm going to add some molding to it on all four sides. I've added top, bottom, and sides, glued and pin nailed, brad where I had to in with the wider pieces. And then I'm gonna paint it. We're gonna paint this little guy black. Of course we are. It's gotta match. Your furniture should either coordinate or be matchy-matchy. And in this circumstance, we're gonna match. You tell me that's not a bookcase. And there it is black. And now I'm adding a couple of uh, pieces of hardware to hang items, to hang purses or whatnot. Whatever Wanda is gonna carry in her lovely storage, she's gonna carry some amazing things. So we need some hardware in this little bookcase. When you're designing a boutique. You need more than just large pieces of furniture. So now we're going to create some mannequins and some other items that Wanda can use for display. I am going to use that plastic little hanger that was in the top of the jewelry box wardrobe and some uh, some thrifted items. The candles, well actually three candlesticks. Um, and two of uh, my own owls, which are available on Etsy, to create not only a, uh, a coat rack, but two mannequins. I have started by taking a drawer pull, just a little wood old drawer pull, because I have many, <laughs> and I've screwed it and glued it to that little hanger, that plastic hanger piece, and now I'm adding some foam into the top of the candlestick. I'm gluing it and I'm adding enough to fill the little divot of the candlestick itself and enough that it will go up into that little cubby of that little hanger. And now I'm just gonna hold it nice and tight right where I want it until the glue sets up. And then of course we will paint it and decorate it. That look lovely. I first glued a very large screw into the bottom of the candlestick and then I filled it with foam. The screw I glued with my B7000 and hot glue so I could get an instant set and I just packed 
that little divot of the candlestick with some foam. Then I simply glued and screwed on the little owl onto the top. A little paint and maybe a little bling. And there you have two mannequins, or I want to say they're hooligans, <laughs> ready to have items displayed upon them. Super exciting news for everyone in my area. Um, we just had a brand new Hobby Lobby open and the grand opening was this last weekend. So I went in and I got a few items for this project. And these felt pieces, they were, they were part of what I picked up. I picked up some felt and I'm going to be using it as the carpet in our little boutique. I am matching all four pieces together as best I can. They do not exactly match. And I'm going to be taping them on the reverse side, the back side, with blue painter's tape. That way I can reuse these pieces if I want to for another project. Maybe I will, <laughs> maybe I won't. But it gives me options. We've all been to those really nice stores where they have display cubes that they they put product on or you can sit on or whatever the case may be. Well, I'm going to create two different types of display cubes. The first using these little drawer blocks that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and I am going to paint them black, every bit of them, uh, the inside drawers and the exterior box itself. And once they're totally painted, I'm going to add hardware because they will be utilized for product. So I flipped the, the front of the drawer to the inside so I had a place to put these cute little hardware pieces. These drawer pulls are minis and they are a wood pile item and I did pick them up at Hobby Lobby as well. And I cut the nail heads short because they are way too long to go through this thin, thin wood. So I am B7000, nee, 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 B7000 nee, nee, <laughs> them to the drawer front in the middle. And then I am gluing and lightly tacking in the nail heads to create a little drawer pull. For my second type of cube, I had picked up quite a long time ago the set of four little love blocks for a buck at uh, one of my resale shops. I don't know, I know it wasn't Goodwill because the sticker wasn't a good one. <laughs> and I'm going to begin with painting them white. All four sides, I'm going to paint them white. Solid white, enough coats so that I cannot see the color or the lettering underneath. And then I'm going to cut out a sticky stencil in the form of a W, which is, of course, Wanda's uh, name of her little shop. It is the Witch's Wardrobe, so the fancy W, it's part of her logo. And I'm going to apply the W once the paint is dry, and I'm going to seal it with Mod Podge, which I don't normally do. I usually seal it with paint, but I saw my good friend Monica uh, do this. So I thought I'm gonna give it a try and um, it does dry faster of course than paint so I really liked the process and then once it was dry I went down to my spray booth <laughs> my basement <laughs> and I spray painted them black totally black and now I'm applying heat to my sticky stencil enough to make it uh, release from the black and then I'm going to pull it off with my tweezers and uh, wango tango we have a, a display block with a logo on it. I uh, have whitewashed here some Dollar Tree little crates because crates are fabulous for display in boutiques. And I also picked up some bottle brush trees at uh, Dollar Tree as well. The Halloween ones which I think are adorable. And I'm going to add some real wood sticks for trunks and I'm going to pop them in some rose pots and give them a little paint, a little moss, and then we have more decor. I 
picked up this little snow globe thing without the snow. <laughs> and I think it was a dollar. And I thought it really looks like, like a crystal ball. So I took one of my own foam jack-o'-lanterns and I painted it orange. And then I used my good old uh, dimensional paint to fill in his little eyes, nose, and mouth. And then I used some uh, pumpkin colored chalk paint to give him some highlights. When next you see this little guy, he will be inside the crystal ball. Remember this lamp? Yeah, it's actually an Avon uh, cologne bottle and it's still full of cologne, but it's a little cauldron. It's a cute little cauldron, but a lamp. So what I did was I sanded down the shade and I used the same technique as on the back of the wardrobe. I heat and bonded my fabric onto the shade. Wait till you see that lamp. I love how it came out. Just a few more touches, few more items, and our boutique will be complete. I am using that little vanity mirror frame and one of my, my bats to create a sign that will let everyone know Wanda's hours of operation. I picked up this cute little wood plaque and these two W's to create Wanda's logo sign. I grabbed him on my visit uh, to my Hobby Lobby. <laughs> These are a couple of other little resale shop finds that I'm going to use for signage within the boutique to let shoppers know what the new arrivals are. No detail has been overlooked in designing this wickedly wonderful witchy boutique. Let's take a sneak peek before the shop even opens. The first thing you see upon entry is Wanda's lovely logo on the back wall, the two W's for the witch's wardrobe. And there's our little hooligan, our manigan owl. Let's take a look at the centerpiece of this beautiful boutique, the lovely wardrobe. You can't even tell it was broken. It mended up so nice and it looks beautiful black. And how about the glitter on the doors? So amazing. And how about the fabric upholstered back panel? So pretty. And taking center stage are our little cube drawers. Look at that hardware, isn't it cute? I love tiny things. Wanda picked up this dry sink at auction and wanted me to fit it into the design. And there's our coat rack, ready for handbags or cloaks. How about some shopping bags? They came in early. And there's our lamp. There's our lamp. I love it. <laughs> A little cauldron lamp with the matching shade. So adorable. And there's Jack and the crystal ball. And I guess Herman Munster is the fashion designer for this season. His items will be coming in soon. Along with brooms and wands from Maryland's. We're all invited back for the grand opening of the witch's wardrobe. Wanda will be stocking all of her lovely items soon. All the spooky, wicked little things. From wands, to shoes, to hats, to potions. I can't wait. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Share it with your family and your friends and anyone that loves Halloween. Leave me a comment and hit the bell so you get notifications of all my new videos. You can show your support by subscribing, so don't forget to subscribe. But for now, this is Dawn with Shabby Meets Bling. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Make sure to stay tuned because this vintage playlist crawl continues in sunny Miami with Annie from Crafting with Indiana Jones.